Hello and welcome back to Coding with T. In today's tutorial, we're going to talk about data tables or the tables that we are going to use to create our professional or display our professional data inside admin panels. We call admin panels mostly using the tables or the tables format. And in the previous tutorial, if you're already following, we learned that we cannot use simple table widget while creating dynamic tables because simple table allow us to only deal with the static data. And if we want to display the dynamic data and for that, we have to use the data table and in today's tutorial we're going to typically talk about the data table and data table 2 widget that is available in pub.dev Okay, so let's quickly have a look what we're going to create. So this is actually a table, a responsive table that is dealing with the dynamic data of products. We, you can see a list of products. Currently, we are displaying one to 10 products out of 101 products. We have some paginations over here. We have number of rows that we can display. You can see we can also hover over any of these rows. When I'm going to click on these, you can see we have the edit product details section appeared. We can go back to products. This means that these rows are clicked we can separately check different type of rows and you can perform a bulk operation action maybe delete it maybe modify them or some other operation that you want to do so you can select all the products remove all the products it's up to you we have different two buttons over here also we have a search option and then you can see we have a sort option currently this uh, product section is not sortable because you can see we have two arrows and the stock is sortable we have one arrows we can make it ascending or descending sort and when i'm going to sort the product you can see now the stock has two arrows whereas the product has one upper and lower arrow means ascending and descending sort so by this way you can add sort Sorts, search, pagination, checkboxes, and bunch of other responsive things. You can also see that this is a responsive table. So when I'm going to reduce it, currently it's in the tablet mode. And now you can see it's in the mobile mode and still we have all the options down below over here. We can scroll the table and all the design is perfectly responsive. So let's get started with today's tutorial. In the previous tutorial, we left off with this data table and in that simple data table, we had two columns and we had two rows. I just added four columns with a bunch of other data. It's remained the same. When I'm going to save this, you can see we have four columns and bunch of other cells. Now inside the data table, you can see we have a decoration property. The box decoration background color is white and the border is all border means on all the side we have a border. So let's explore some other properties like we have a different border, border of the table border. Then we have checkbox, clip behavior. We have the column spacing, data row color. So let's scroll it a bit down over here. You can see we have on select all. We have a checkbox column option and we have sorting options. But other than that, we do not have anything that we can use to make this data table as dynamic. So what we're going to do, we're going to use the data table to package I have just added in the pubspec.yml file, make sure it should be up to date. So add a data table to in the main dependencies. This data table to feature has a lot of benefits that we can use alongside with this data table. Let's say I want to use the data table two column. So I just have to write data column two next to the simple column. So now this will be treated as data column two and inside let's explore some of the features we have mouse cursor numeric on sort and tooltip for the simple data column whereas for the data column 2 and in here you can see we have a new option which is fixed width and rest of the things are same as simple data column and also in order to make this data table to data table 2 we just have to write 2 next to it the rest everything will remain same and now we can see some of other options that are not easily available in data table 2 we will explore them but also inside this data table too you cannot see anything like pagination so in order to use the pagination we have to use the paginated data table using this data table too we can sort arrow animation we can give the static or custom defined column widths we can freeze the columns we can freeze the rows we can also use our custom arrow animations or the animated icons we can use arrow builder to do that you can see the arrow icon over here we have lot of other options that are not 
not easily available in the data table too whereas like we have lm ratio we have is vertical scroll bar visible horizontal scroll bar visible we can deal with the scroll bars we have fixed top rows fixed left columns fixed corner color and lot of other things that we can use to easily customize our data tables you can see we have a new thing which is empty widget if our data table is empty we can provide a widget over here that will be displayed in case of there is nothing inside our data table we have a column spacing and bunch of other things that we are going to explore in few minutes but remember we do not have any option for the sorting for the data table or the data table too so the first property we have already assigned is the columns and then we have rows so let me minimize these columns and rows then we have a decoration other than decoration we can assign a column spacing i'm going to give it 12 this is the spacing between the columns let's assign a minimum width this minimum width means that let's say our table contains a type of data when we are going to make our design responsive like you can see over here we have products in the mobile and you can see a scroll bar so this scroll bar is scrolling and showing all the data perfectly as it should be and easy to readable but after the specific width of this uh, product column you can see it's breaking the line to a next line so this text is or the title is into two lines whereas other titles are easily readable so we have a minimum width set for this table let's say i'm going to give 786 as minimum width then we can give the divider thickness this is the line thickness between the rows if you want to create a line or display a line between rows you can add any value i do not want to add lines between the rows so make it zero then we have the horizontal margin so basically this horizontal margin is the margin between the first and the last cell then we can also display one more thing which is currently not available over here how many rows we want to display per page because that case is typically for the pagination and we cannot use pagination in simple data table too so instead we can use data row color data row height data text style so a lot of things can be customizable let's say we have rows that displaying images inside it so it should be having a larger row height so let's say we are going to go for the 56 these are the random values that you can change easily and i'm going to save this you can see the side spacing has been reduced because by default it is 24 or something but now we have a 12 spacing from the sides we have spacing between columns we cannot see it because of the color it's white in the background but when we are going to use simply from data table to data table 2 you can see it is taking the complete space and making it responsive so let me reduce the size you can see it is making it responsive by itself so that is another benefit of using data table 2 which is not available in the simple data table next to style the header i have a heading text style with the title medium using the text theme and then we have heading row color we have to use previously it was material state property but now that thing is depreciated you have to use widget state property and to assign the color we have t color dot primary background so this color is in the list of colors class you can see this is the color that we are going to use for the primary background and it is located in the utils constants and colors then we have heading row decoration using this box decoration i have added a border radius of top left and top right to bit of circular now when we're going to save this you can see a light background color for the column but because of the border we cannot see a radius over here i have added another property which is show checkbox column and it might not be able to show the checkbox in this scenario so let's test it and you can see we do not have any checkbox here we can still unable to select any of these rows so to again make it more professional we have to switch towards instead of using the data table we have to use paginated data table again you can use a simple one or the two i'm going to use the paginated data table too and when i'm going to select this you can see this decoration is no longer needed we cannot use this and also you can see we cannot use the rows over here so what can we use instead of the rows we have another thing which is source and for the source we need data table source you can see it is a type of data table source now in order to use the source i'm going to create a new class because data table source will be a class let's say i'm going to name it my data or the products data or something you can call it order rows or order data it just have to extend with the data table source so this is what we have to do to create a new class 
Now this class, you can see an error. We have to hover over it and create four missing overrides. So we have overrided four things. The first one is get row. Inside this, we are going to return a row. And then we have is row count approximate. It is a Boolean. So let's just say false. We do not know the row count. Let's give some random number for now. Let's say 36. Selected row count for now is zero. We can change these things. And the main one is this get row and we have an index. So let's say we have 100 rows. So one by one, this get row function will be triggered and will create a single row at a time. So for the first row, the index will be zero. Then for the ninth row, index will be eight. For the 10th row, it will be ninth index. So in this way, we have to create our rows. So let's design a single row. We have to return a data row. As you can see this return type, we have to return a data row. You can use data row simple or data row 2. I'm going to use data row 2. Inside we have list of cells. The, the number of cells should be exactly same as the number of columns. Otherwise it is not going to work or give some errors. Now inside the cells we are going to use the data cell property and in that we can return any type of child. Currently I'm going to or any type of widget you can use. I'm going to use a text widget. So we have four columns. That's why we are going to use four cells. For the four columns inside one single row and based on each index it will automatically run as many times as we have the number of row counts over here so in order to get the dynamic data first of all or in the upcoming videos when we're going to properly work or use this paginated data table we have to call the controller the controller that is going to return us a list of products list of brands from the database or any other type of data that we want to fetch and display inside our data table. So let's try to use the same example over here. Okay, for the sake of example, I've created a dashboard controller, which is again a getx controller. And in that we have a simple list. For now, we do not get any data from the database, but we are going to create the data locally using list.generate. 236 number of rows so it is a type of obs list if you are new you can watch the previous videos to learn more about the getx and what are these things so whenever this instance will be created of this dashboard controller the on and it will trigger this fetch dummy data and we are going to assign the dummy data to this data list so let's say we have the data inside our data list so first of all inside my data let's create instance of this dashboard controller class so that we have a controller now whenever the instance will be created for the first time it is going to assign this or trigger this on init and will load all the dummy data inside this data list this means now we have the data inside the data list we can use it inside our get row because it is a list of data we can get a list like this we're going to call the controller call the data list and at current index we will be able to get the data that we want to display and now we can use this data to data of column one if you see this dashboard we have the key value pairs because it is a map of string and string so we have a key and against the key we have some value so we can use the same key to extract the data at current index and if it is going to be null we can return the empty string so now we can do the control d change the columns so that for each index or for each row we will be able to extract the data like this and we're going to return the data row with the four data cells in it we can change this 36 to controller dot data list dot length because we want to display the number of rows as much rows as inside this data list none is selected and row count is not approximate for now okay let's save the code and before saving we have to assign the source over here the source is my data control or tell to align the code my data is this one because this is the data table source that we created inside that source or let's talk about from the top we have a paginated data table too which needs columns some of the design and its source we have four columns and based on those four columns we have created a source the data or the data table source in that we have a row and we have four other override options three other options alongside with this get row in this get row we are going to design the row how it is going to look Look like and it should have the four cells because we have four columns at the top now we get the data either you can get that data from 
cloud servers because in the upcoming videos we are going to get the data from database which is firebase you can get data from any database and you have to pass that data over here and just map that data based on this current index and we are done so let's open this and you can see we have four columns and each column contains list of data currently we are displaying one out of ten sorry one to ten of 36 records we can go to next and we can go to previous because this one is by default enabled because we are using paginated data table instead of the simple data table so this is the benefit of using paginated data table you can use available rows per page hide paginator on page change on rows per page change and rows per page let's say we want to display 12 rows per page let's save it and now you can see we have 1 to 12 rows of 36 and based on that we have the record right in front of us so like this you can play with all these other options in the next tutorial we are going to talk about that how we are going to use the search feature the checkbox how we're going to select any of the row or make the rows hoverable so that we can select it select one or multiple rows and after that we are going to create one more tutorial which will be based on this dashboard controller so that we cannot use the same functions again and again so that will be again a new concept that will be coming after the next video so make sure to stay tuned and once again thank you for watching if you have any questions you can ask me down below in the comments and if you're new you can watch the previous videos link is in the description thank you for watching and take care